special edition of WeatherScope. Comprehensive, severe weather coverage from the Weather Channel Forecast Center. Good evening. You're looking at pictures of Stu Ostro. Stu, thanks for joining us. Sure. Good. Well, we've got a lot to talk about. Let's get right into it. Uh, some of the statistics on Hurricane Bertha. Now, this advisory came out from the NHC at uh, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. The next one will be out at 9 o'clock. But it had diminished somewhat in intensity. Not a lot, but 100 mile an hour winds moving to the north northeast at 14 miles an hour and the pressure at 979 millibars. As far as the location, keep in mind this was about an hour ago, 35 miles miles west-southwest of New Bern. Yeah, we're already seeing some of those rains spread northward up the coast and a little bit inland as well, and that will continue throughout the night. That's right. Coastal flooding certainly will be one of the biggest problems with this there. Well, we'll have some coastal flooding, in other words, the, uh, the wind pushing the water on shore, but we also have to worry about the uh, flooding just from the rain, which falls away from the coast, too. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about the radar, um, actually the storm surge, first of all, and we're expecting it in North Carolina to be how high in the south? Uh, well, along the immediate coast, we may have had uh, storm surges as high as six to eight feet earlier. Uh, the high tide did occur a couple of hours ago, so the, the water is about as high as it's going to get, mm -hmm. uh, both due to the tide going down and also the hurricane starting to weaken. A little farther up the coast, we could be seeing tides in the range of two to four feet above normal, which is certainly not catastrophic, no. but enough to cause some problems. Right, we do have reports around Highway 12, around Hatteras Village of roadways underwater. Certainly that'll be the case tomorrow when people uh, start to venture out in North Carolina. A lot of roads will be uh, hard to see. That is a possibility, yes. All right, well, it's time now to take a look and go to Jeff Morrow. He is in Buxton, North Carolina, near Hatteras. And Jeff, earlier you were dealing with some violent, squally weather. Oh, yeah, to say the least, Janine, it was uh, really nasty. Uh, I hope that's the worst of what uh, Bertha has to throw at us, and I hope it's weakening from here on out. It was pretty impressive. We had some winds uh, probably gusting uh, up over 80 miles an hour, I would imagine, with sustained winds uh, in the uh, 60 mile an hour range. Just the wind whipping the rain sideways and uh, wouldn't have wanted to be standing out directly in that. Uh, it was pretty impressive. Right now, things have backed off somewhat. We seem to be in a little bit of a lull. I suspect we're not quite done yet, though, and we'll probably have a few more rain squalls and wind squalls come moving on through as we head on through the evening. Uh, I'd like to direct this uh, to Stu. Uh, Stu, do you see anything else coming our way right now? Jeff, you uh, will see a couple more squalls as the evening goes on, but now that the uh, hurricane center is moving inland and is beginning to lose, the hurricane is beginning to lose its energy, I think what you've seen is about as bad as it's going to get, but uh, bad enough, even though it wasn't a category four or five hurricane, fortunately, uh, this area saw a tropical storm Arthur not too long ago, and quite a bit different than that, wasn't it? Oh, from what I understand, uh, Arthur, as it came up here, uh, just brought a few uh, small rain showers through the area and maybe a, a brief gusty squall, and that would be about it. This definitely a much bigger system. Uh, even though it gave this part of the Outer Banks kind of a glancing blow with the main effects being felt farther down the coast, uh, it was bad enough as, as we witnessed it here. By the way, I heard Janine mention about uh, down by Hatteras Village, Highway 12 uh, did get overwashed pretty badly, and I think it is still underwater down there. From what we understand, a lot of the uh, dune there uh, kind of gave way and a lot of the ocean just came pouring on through. So that'll be something that will have to be dealt with. Hatteras Village may be a little bit cut off. Jeff, uh, as we mentioned, different from Arthur, different from a very strong hurricane, certainly there is quite the range of uh, storms that can affect the North Carolina coast. However, also during the winter, they get their share of just basically very strong onshore flows and the occasional nor'easter. So this is a very precarious part of the uh, world, but it's also a, a part where the residents have to deal with this sort of thing quite often. Well, they deal with it in summer, spring, fall, and uh, winter. You may remember the big Halloween storm a few years ago, and of course all the big nor'easters, and sometimes the uh, super storm that happened a few years ago, they all seem to affect the Outer Banks here. So it comes from all directions at all times of the year, and they are very weather savvy, I guess is the way to put it. They've been through a lot of these things, and this is just another in the long line of storms to affect the Outer Banks. 
Okay, Jeff, hang in there. Uh, probably a few more squalls to come, but you probably are experiencing the worst of it right now. And we'll talk to Stu about that now. Uh, what we're seeing is probably the worst of the stormy weather, the squally weather, and the windy weather now. Right, along the, uh, the Outer Banks, uh, again, it's about as bad as it is going to be, but the, uh, the automated reporting station that we have, uh, what's called Diamond Shoals, which is just off of Cape Hatteras, has still had sustained winds on the order of uh, almost 70 miles per hour with higher gusts over the past couple of hours. And as each one of these granted uh, relatively weaker uh, squall bands comes through, it's still going to kick up the wind pretty well, uh, heavy downpour. But now that we have the center of the hurricane solidly inland, it's been cut off from its main source of energy. That's not to say, though, that as it moves up the coast, there aren't still going to be very strong winds, uh, not only in North Carolina for a while longer, but also uh, Virginia, New Jersey, and on up from there. It's a very large hurricane and is going to take a while to wind down. All right, well, what are you thinking uh, for places like the Jersey Shore, the Capes of Virginia in the next 24 hours? Well, they're going to experience a, a couple main effects. One is going to be the uh, very heavy rain that's already spreading up the coast, and not only just the immediate coast, but places inland. And also, they will have, uh, they'll have some heavy winds coming through along the coast. Nothing catastrophic, but one of our big concerns at this point is that it's the peak of the vacation season. Uh, there are a lot of people along the coast, countless thousands of people, that is. People may be tempted to go in the water, which will be very rough and very dangerous, so uh, they need to think twice about that. Right. We do want to remind people, even when Hurricane Felix never came ashore last year, several people were killed because they were venturing out into the waters when they shouldn't have been. So just a friendly warning to you there. By tomorrow, the sea certainly will be churned up east of Virginia towards New Jersey and even in the Long Island Sound, eventually through southern New England. Well, that about wraps it up. We're going to take it to the studio now uh, where we'll have the latest on the current weather in the U.S. and also your forecast for the weekend. We've got Bertha moving up with still a lot of lines, and these lines represent pressure and each time you change the pressure, and the more you change it, the stronger the winds are going to be. And we have a lot of lines there, so that's why we have so much wind. It's a very tight pressure gradient with the hurricanes. Consequently, or actually, and conversely, we don't have much of a pressure gradient with this low. There's not a lot of wind with it, but we do have some thunderstorms that are popping up, and they could be severe. Now, here are the temperatures right now. Very warm in the west, and it should stay warm as we go through the weekend. We do have a couple of spots for severe weather tonight. Uh, in northwestern parts of, uh, of Illinois, maybe Chicago being affected later on, and also in so southern Wisconsin. Also some thunderstorms coming out of the front range.